everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another beautiful Jenny Live. I hope you're having an amazing evening. Tonight, tonight is going to be a special night and we are only going to do it in English, FYI. So if you're an English speaker, stay with us. We will subtitle it later in Spanish. So we have a dear friend here with us visiting in Energy Tulum, Hector Martinez. He is the best advocate for nudism, I think, in the world. So <laughs> that, that's how big of an intro I'm going to give him. <laughs> Thank Hi, you. Hector. How are you? Hi, Jenny. Thank you for having me here. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. You got to listen up. This yeah. is Jenny Live. You know, it's yeah. like, I'm, I, not, I, I I'm not used to being live. I'm used, no. I'm used to the magic of editing. Recording. If, if I screw up, you could just cut it out and you can screw up here as much as you want. <laughs> like, this is right at home. We're right at home here, and that's how it should feel. Um, I don't like editing that much, you know? You it's don't? like, the live is like, if you get it wrong, then you get it wrong, yeah. but it's a one shot. It's a lot of responsibility. Uh, I guess when you have an audience that just kind of loves you, and it's like, you can mess up, and it's totally cool. I'm not sure if my audience loves me that much. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, so we've always had so many questions from you guys about nudism, and about, um, especially, like, how do you start being a nudist? I've always said that I don't particularly promote nudism, but you guys, a lot of you guys uh, think that I do, which is totally fine. Um, Hector, on the other hand, promotes nudism. Like that is, that's kind of like what you live for. It's your passion, right? Like you love it. It's my passion. It's my job. It's, you know, what I, I, I want to share with the world. And when did this start? At what age and why? Ooh, well, I was probably around my early 20s, maybe 22. Okay. It was during the World Naked Bike Ride in 2014. There's a World Naked Bike Ride? Yeah. Was it for like a Guinness record or something? No, it's, it's no? an international event that takes place in hundreds of cities nice. worldwide. Yeah. And in Guadalajara, it started in 2010, I believe. But okay. I, I heard about it in 2013, but I participated in 2014. And for me, it was just like a life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. Like it was the first time that I felt myself. <clears throat> I felt like this clothing is like a costume that we wear depending on the occasion, what uh -huh. we want to convey. And that so day- So you were naked on a, on a bike? I was naked on a bike. And I'm sure there's a lot of men out there saying, how? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did that exactly happen? <laughs> it's like, well, you have to clean up after, <laughs> like before and after. Okay. No cushing, no, no nothing? Well, no. <laughs> no? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, I, it's like everybody wonders that before they think about even the purpose of the event. But it's, you know? it's basically the same thing. Like, this doesn't cover up much. So. No, that's true. Okay. Yeah. So, so how long was it for? Like, how long did you have to ride for? It was like 25 kilometers or something like that. Okay. And it was bad. a pretty quick pace. So okay. it, was, it felt more like a you marathon. Like... Yeah. <laughs> I was more concentrated on keeping up than I was being naked. <laughs> so did you get something if you were first or? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Just the satisfaction of accomplishing okay, like, it. I'm first. Yay. Yeah. Okay. So you were 20. I was 22, I believe. 22. That's when nudism basically came to your life. That's when I first lived my experience. And for me, it was just waiting a year to live an experience like this was far too long. Uh -huh. So I started searching online and I found out that there was a federation. And um, a federation they. Federation of nudists. A, a nudist, Mexican nudist federation. Oh, there's a, a Mexican nudist federation. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah, nice. Fed, fed nude mix. Okay. So. Which you were a, pres a former president, right? I later became president of the institution, yeah, from 2018 to 2020. Okay. Yeah. So. I just felt like it was, it was a great experience and that I needed to continue to live an experience like that. So from there on, I started searching for more places. I found a clothing optional sauna called a Temascal. Oh yeah, we love Temascals. We were talking about this yesterday. We have one here, man. You have a Temascal? Yeah, we have a Temascal. Really? It's a modern Temascal. It's, it's basically like a transparent plastic dome. But it's still a Temescal. <laughs> why, why am I now learning? <laughs> right? Like, he's only been here for two days, and he's just learning we have a Temescal. Yeah. Sadly, I leave tomorrow, so. Next time, next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, how did, what, is, what was it like? I feel like for most people that are trying nudism for the first time, you're always wondering, like, 
before you actually got naked, was it a hesitation to do yeah, it or did it just sure. kind of, were you just like, whatever? Well, from the moment that I discovered that I wanted to do this to the moment that I took off my clothes, which was an entire year, I was nervous. So you were, you got ready for a year? Yeah, well, I couldn't, <laughs> like, if it was up to me, I would have done it the next day, uh -huh. but I didn't have the opportunity. Okay. But I felt really, really nervous. And it's, it's really concerning as a man because you don't really know what to do with your penis. Right. You don't know if it should be erect or if it shouldn't be oh, yeah, erect. Yeah. You don't know if the size is right, if people are, like... <laughs> There's so many things. I think that's probably what most men think of also. Yeah, I can relate to that. So at first I had no idea what it was like, but you know, the moment that, that I took off my clothes and I started being a part of the event, I quickly forgot that I was nude. Right, people so, make you feel like that, right? Yeah, and then there's like a really hard to explain synergy, like everyone is in the same frequency, and like you forget completely that you're mm -hmm. nude. It's not towards the end of the event where people started dressing where I realized, okay, oh, yeah. it's like I'm nude. But it was interesting because I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want anyone to get dressed. Like I wanted, I wanted people to just to hang out Continue. nude. Yeah, <laughs> sadly that wasn't the case. But from there on, I felt the urge to find more experiences like there this. more often. Now, did you try being naked like in your own home before the event? Not really, no. No, no. just in the shower? But just, yeah. Like, just, so, okay, interesting. I always tell people um, to feel comfortable, start like in your own home, make sure the mirrors are up, make sure that you're like getting used to your body the way it is. Um, so for men that maybe are going through the same idea of the, of the thoughts that you had, how did you cope with that? Like when, when did you realize that it was fine? Well, I, I didn't realize it was fine until I lived the experience. You lived it, right. Yeah, so I had, I had no idea, and I felt nervous, but I wasn't going to allow that to stop me from doing something that I, I felt an impulse and an urge to do. I can't explain it. It's just the moment I found out that it was a possibility, I had to do it. Yeah. Were you, uh, did you hate clothes when you were a little kid? Not really. No? No. My mom used to tell me that I, I hated shoes. Like, I used to just, like, throw them out. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm always barefoot. I'm the barefoot presenter. <laughs> Hola, Tarcicio. Welcome, guys. Uh, join us. <laughs> uh, hi, David, Chris. I love Jenny Spontaneous. Yeah, this is totally spontaneous, by the way. We did not plan this interview. So if you guys have questions you want to ask, please go ahead. We have our chat open in YouTube and Facebook and our MiamiTV.com chat as well. Welcome, Colombia. Vamos a hacer únicamente en inglés para luego que sea más fácil traducirlo, amigos. Okay, así que inglés por hoy. If not, it'll be crazy to translate. The translator will go crazy if we're doing English and Spanish. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, it would be like, what? AI is still not as smart, by the way. Oh, yeah. You use AI, right? Uh, well, I think it, it is AI, right? Because there's not know. like somebody on the other side I have translating. No idea. It, hears you, it hears you out and it just automatically oh, translates. Cool. Yeah, technology. Like voice recognition, sort of. Probably, yeah. Okay, so did you find out then that it didn't matter what size you are and where to put it and how to where do to it? it. <laughs> you know, that's what you said. You're like, where am I going to put it? Well, I don't remember saying that specifically, but... <laughs> that, that's what I heard. Did you guys hear that? I heard that. that... <laughs> I'm not sure if they heard the same thing, but... Like, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think that for men is... Uh, I think for women is a little bit easier. Like we don't think about like, are my boobs big enough, right? If I go out naked to a public beach, not a public beach, a naked beach, a nude beach. Um, but men, like you said, you might have that little bit of insecurity of saying, do I, do I look appropriate yeah. or what would happen? Hi Marcelo, a nudist and when you get used to naturally being more naked than dressed, how uncomfortable and I lost it. Can we have that? Podemos tener ese mensaje otra vez? Um, so, sorry guys, if you write too long, the message does not stay up on the screen for a while, so uh, they didn't want to be fine. You live in the near jungle. Hi Jenny, the ancient Mayans built cities hitting in the jungle. How, what does that have to do with nudism though? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it, Anthony. Thank you so much. We're, we're staying away from the spiritualism, even though I have to say that spiritual, I mean, nudism and energy, I think, are, are kind of like also in unison. Because how free did you feel when you start this lifestyle? I felt like, I, I guess it was the first time in my life that I felt myself. So I felt completely free. Right. And, and free from expectations. Because I believe, like, as, I, as I said, clothes is like a costume that we wear depending on the occasion. So when you don't have to uh, 
apparent, uh, aparentar, like. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, tough word. Aparentar, <laughs> anyone here, Spanglish, no? <laughs> well, when you don't have to like demonstrate, or demonstra yeah. demonstrate anything to anyone, then you're free to be yourself. Yeah. And then that, I think that was the main thing that I enjoyed about it. And then I, I felt a huge urge to share that with the rest of the world. And that's how I started advocating for the normalization of nudity. So how big is nudism in Mexico? Hi, Levi. Levi. I'd say it's pretty big. It's it, it, what happens is Mexico has been a country where nudism has been going on since like maybe the 60s, the 70s, mm -hmm. but it was very anonymous. It was very underground. Isn't that weird that you're saying nudism has been going on since the 60s and 70s and it's like, no, it's been going on since we're born, dude. Well, yeah. I mean, being naked has always been a thing. Right. It was a thing before clothing, of course. I mean, cavernicolas, like yeah. what, cavemen were naked, so. That, that's funny because I, I think that clothing was invented to protect us from the environment, so it had a purpose. But I believe that. But humans are cultural beings, so they repeat behavior that when they started the behavior, it, it had a meaning or it was there was a reason behind it. But eventually it just becomes what we call culture, and mm -hmm. we, we stop questioning why we do s certain things. And I think th our relationship with clothing was something like that, that at first we would, we would protect ourselves from the environment. From the sun. From but eventually, like, we controlled our surroundings by building houses mm -hmm. and building, you know, places where we could protect ourselves. And then from there on, we just continued wearing clothing, and then eventually religion came along, and then there was this sex shame, and there was... A lot of, you know, now social media with unrealistic beauty standards and hypersexualization mm -hmm. and a, a lot of other things. I feel like that's why we, we see nudity as something wrong. But mm -hmm. as you mentioned, we were, we were always, we were born naked. So, yeah. like, we don't dress anything else in nature. Why, why should we cover our, our bodies? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm, I was really surprised to hear that uh, Mexico had such a large following for nudism. I think maybe one of the countries that started nudism the, uh, at first that we can remember in history was France. With the, the, I think the first ever nude beach was in France, like legally. I'm not sure. I, that I might mean, be I wrong, know, by I the way. I know that France, Germany, and, and those countries, I think England and so on, had they started around the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I know at least in Germany, most Germans, if they see a naked person, they're like, oh, yeah, no, it's totally normal. You know, you can tan naked all the time. And it's also become a market. I mean, it's all globalization, right? And money, money, money. So how many people just like what you're wearing right now, most people would say, oh, you can't wear the same thing. Um, exposing the whole body to the God's son, we invoke all its power. I 100% believe that, that if you tan naked, you are absorbing all of the power of the sun. So, I don't know, do, do you think I, I've a watched thing? you tan. <laughs> <laughs> He's watched me tan. Do you have like your hour of tanning? I do, I have, I think it's super important. Cavemen use animal hides as clothing. Okay, well they had no other choice, you know, so they, yeah, they had to use it. But what about people that are going through the stage where it's just like a fad, right? Like, um, I think that's probably causing one of the number one, not number one, that's just uh, talking shit, but, <laughs> um, a, a pollution is it yeah pollution with clothing where yeah. it's the fast fashion that's what it's called yeah, yeah, yeah. so when a fashion is you know it's popular because you see it in a celebrity it comes and goes and then it's gone you need to throw that away and buy something new so if anything you're doing a great job for pollution and for our planet by the way yeah that, that's another benefit that we don't talk about as much but there's you know there's a continent of plastic floating in the ocean of all the things that we consume that we probably don't really need. Mm -hmm. I think if we, if we consume, like, I, I, that's another thing. There's a misconception. It's not that nudists hate clothing. Mm -hmm. We don't hate clothing. We just want the option to choose whether to use it or not. And if people had the option to choose and it wasn't something that is frowned upon or stigmatized, then we would greatly reduce the yeah, pollution, pollution when it comes to clothing, fabrics, plastics. Everything associated with clothing destroys our environment. The amount of water that it takes like the, to create clothing and the dyes. And the, like to maintain it, like how many chemicals do detergents and all these things have mm -hmm. that we end up dumping in the ocean or in rivers yeah. or in other places. So I'm not saying let's get rid of clothing, but one, we should probably create materials that are more eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. And two, we should have the option not to use it. Like for example, here in the jungle, 
it's really hot. So we're naked. I, I don't want to be dressed in the jungle. That's why we're naked. <laughs> it's clothing optional. You guys can come visit, of course, anytime. But, um, but yeah, if anything, I mean, there's so many other like communities and things that are out there trying to get recognized. And if anything, I think that nudism um, is one that probably should be high up there more than than the other ones that are getting attention because at least you're doing something for the environment. <laughs> for the environment and also for people's self-esteem, for people yeah, like self-confidence. And that's another thing. I, th I think that we have commercialized insecurities. So we mm -hmm. make people feel ashamed of their bodies. We create an unrealistic standard that they aspire to, but they have to consume all these products and you know this type of clothing and these plastic surgeries and blah, 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 in order to look it, like... Cool. And yeah, but but then again, it's something that no one will ever reach because yeah. I, I'd say not like not even Jennifer Lopez looks like Jennifer Lopez. Really? Uh, oh, if, you see, if you see her in person, she looks nothing like she does. Really? Online on Instagram. And, yeah. For some reason, that's like one of the celebrities that I would be like, she totally looks like that in person. No, she probably no? doesn't. You've seen her. In I mean, person? I've never seen her in person. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, um, but I know what you mean, though. It's, yeah, we're, we've been sold this idea of what the perfect person should look like. Even with AI, like if you look at, um, there's new AI, I've even actually tried it, and some of you have noticed that it's AI, and some of you actually haven't. Like, I've seen the pictures of me that an AI generated just with your face, and send it to my mom, for example, and she's like, oh, you look so beautiful, and I'm like, wow. if you're not, no, like, and Enrique, his, Enrique's um, phone screen is an AI picture of me. That's scary. That's what that <laughs> it's scary because we're, we're reading a point where nothing is real. Yeah. And there's no wrinkles in that in the AI. Like, it's just perfection. And it's like, man, if that's what people are really aiming for, I mean, fine. You've got to give people what they want at the end of the day. It's, it's kind of a business at the same time. But it's sad that we're pushing so far away but from But I think it's a vicious reality. cycle. Like, that's what people want because that's what people have been educated to expect. But if, if you break with that idea, and, and more and more people have become aware of, like, filters and, mm -hmm. and everything that is fake online. Yeah. It's scary because at first only celebrities had access to this. So they, they had, like, their photographers, their editors. The, Hours the, of yeah. editing. <laughs> like, th they were the only ones who had access to all this. And now, with these AI applications, any, you know, random 13-year-old can take a picture and then process it through AI and then upload something. And, and at such a young age yeah. where, where their self-esteem is developing, mm -hmm. Like, they, they become accustomed to an unrealistic standard. I think yeah. that's something that should concern us as a society. And I feel like nudism is an alternative because nudism breaks with all this BS. Like, what yeah. you see is what you get. Like, there's, there's nothing more than this is who I am. Yeah. Um, I do agree with you that it definitely plays, like, a big role in your self-esteem because what do you have to hide? You have nothing to hide. So, other than your personality, maybe, you have to have a really shitty personality. <laughs> well, some people have a really hard time hiding that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you can be naked, but if you're, if you're not a good person, then we're going to see right through you, even if you're naked or clothed. Okay, let's go with some questions. Um, I don't know how we're doing with the comments or if there's been some issues, but in case you guys are writing, give us some time. Um, I think men worry too much about how big it is. I agree. I agree, too. I agree. I, I think men worry more than women care yeah i think so too when you fall in love and you like someone it's a little bit past that you know it's just you look at the person at least at least if you're falling in love with the right person <laughs> if you're falling in love with somebody that's superficial then you have a problem um so what would you say to men that maybe are feeling insecurity to go to a nude beach because of that i think we've been we've been set an unrealistic standard based on pornography mm -hmm. because sadly most of the sex education that we have access to is through pornography yeah, so we we don't know what a real body looks like and we don't know what a real man performs like so we've been sold this idea that you have to be big and that you have to last for three hours which, like machines yeah <laughs> and and you know i don't feel like that's, That's not, true. No, like, no. I, I, I don't think most women, I mean, some women probably want that, but mm -hmm. most women are more concerned about other things. And, and that's what I think we should, we should understand. It's not the size that matters. And especially in a nudist environment, no one cares. No. 
because it's not like a contest to see who is bigger or anything. And and as you notice, most bodies are are not, you know. They're not perfect. Like and it's and it's so curious because when you go to a nude beach, like there's all types of different per people, ages, bodies. Um, and when you see how relaxed they are, the first time I went to a nude beach, it was, and I think this happens to everyone, um, it's like, I'm going to take my top off, but I'm going to be facing down to the sand, mm -hmm. <laughs> just in case. And then when you realize that nobody gives a crap, like nobody's yeah. looking at you, yeah. then you're like, am I not important then? You know, like, do I not, you know, it's do like, I not hey, stand out? I'm nude. <laughs> <laughs> like, hello. And I think the environment itself makes people feel comfortable. So for those that are looking to, go to a nude beach yeah definitely try it out uh dog or develops society <laughs> no logro leer <laughs> it's too fast developed societies and countries are characterized for following nudity not only at the beaches but in a lot of other places um i think that's kind of also what hector is pushing towards i mean these events let's talk about the event that you're doing uh the day that what day is it a day in the nude a so day in the nude a day okay. in the nude is a public display that is going to take place in mexico city and guadalajara okay and this year is going to be a little bit different from past years we've we've done this before where we would march out in the streets so people would know we exist as a community this year we want to do like a, a picnic like we we want to go to, to a park we want to have volleyball football um want so, to have like body paint and yoga and different activities in the nude in, in a public environment. And the idea behind this is for society to see that it's normal, that, it's normal, that there, yeah. there isn't a big deal. And I think one of the main obstacles we face as a community is censorship. Mm -hmm. So when we do something that is newsworthy, it's something that gets a lot more coverage. Mm -hmm. So it's like a way to, you know, bypass censorship yeah. yeah yeah and also like something that i noticed when i had my first experience was like i felt immediately a frustration that why didn't i know this existed before and i think that's the main problem that we you face did when you were a baby well, well yeah but i didn't know I being know. naked was a thing <laughs> and and i feel like if more people had access to this information mm. we would you know question our relationship with our bodies so that's the intent behind the a day in the nude it's going to take place on saturday may 18th okay. in mexico city and saturday may 25th in guadalajara okay i really love guadalajara it's such a beautiful place you lived there for a while or you're from there i'm from there and i currently live there right now okay yeah it's, it's, I, I moved back I, I lived in los cabos for a while it's like one of those cities that i mean me as like an american not knowing many places in mexico just basically to live in cancun it was like wow this city is like i feel like i'm in the u.s or even better like it's so advanced um, it's very modern, uh, very beautiful, a lot of green, a lot, a lot of uh, also like self-produced um, like vegetables and fruits and so many stuff that you guys eat actually comes from Mexico. It's beautiful. Anyway, so I love it. I know it's not so secure maybe now or... Sadly, yeah, well, a lot well, of like places... Well, like everywhere in the world at the same time, right? A lot of places right now in Mexico are not very safe. Yeah, Tulum sadly. either, guys. We're in Tulum, and unfortunately... Anyway, let's get back to nudism. <laughs> <laughs> um, it must be going nude in mixed company that guys are leery of because we skinny dip with the guys all the time. So maybe guys feel insecure if there's another guy around them that does have a better body. I don't know if that's the case. It, the comment is really interesting because it reminds me like when, when my grandfather and father were young, mm -hmm. they had this like sauna, steam bath culture. Mm -hmm. So they would play football or whatever. And then mm -hmm. after that, like they would all, all the men would gather in the steam bath and they would just hang out nude and, and drink beer and exercise and whatever. And it's funny because that's something that uh, is slowly being lost. Yeah. So now when you go to these steam baths, you notice that guys start wearing shorts and stuff. But it's, it's funny because it's something that is, in a sense, frowned upon. Like the guys that are nude look at the guys that are dressed a little bit weird, but they tend because to be- Because you should be naked. Yeah, Yeah, that's what's expected. And it's, it's funny because they don't consider themselves to be nudists, no. but it's an environment where nudity is expected or was expected. Yeah. Uh, somebody just said uh, in Finland, uh, Pai, I think, in, fin in Finland and Norway, the bond uh, nude and sauna too. It's calming peace body language, speaking without words to each other. So are, are, is people, are you, people usually quiet in saunas? I don't, I don't think I've ever been to a sauna with a bunch of people. I think they do the same thing in Sweden. Hi, Martin. 
Um, they do. Yeah. So Europe has this big culture of sauna, and the interesting <laughs> thing about Europe is that it tends to be mixed saunas. So men oh, and women nice. would go to the sauna and just hang out nude. I wonder how that play, that would play out in the U.S. <laughs> Probably would never happen. Hi, Hi B. Chang. We are actually live. Uh, it's just that, look, I mean, I can't get to all the comments at once, but we are live. So if you're watching us, it's 7.31, Friday, March 22nd. And if you're looking for a nudist event to kind of just get involved with a, with, a, with a nudist community again, then definitely check out A Day in the Nude in Guadalajara, Mexico on May, May 18th, Mexico May 18th, City. Mexico City. And May 25th, Guadalajara. So are you going to be like in the front with like the, do, do you have a flag? Is there a nudist flag? <laughs> there, no? there was a nudist symbol. It was okay. an effort that was done on Twitter. I can see online. you like in front of the line, like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't carry flags. No. <laughs> usually, usually I just carry a, a megaphone where I'm Oh, you're a megaphone. At, like I'm the activist dude. And I'm just yelling at everyone. <laughs> what do you say? Well, I, I give instructions and okay. I tell them what the event is about. Get naked. No. <laughs> It's no. like, <laughs> so do you ever have any uh, people that are just kind of there for the curiosity that break the vibe of everybody else? Well, when it comes to public display, I think people that are dressed are expected. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a topic, for example, that in, in other events, like the World Naked Bike Ride, they had this discussion whether people should be or shouldn't be nude. Yeah. And, and I feel it also like if people should or not feel comfortable with cameras. Mm -hmm. I feel like if people are willing to go out in public and to display like what, like share what this is about. Yeah. I think people that are dressed and cameras are expected. Yeah. If you're in, in a private setting, in an event, at a hotel, or even at a nude beach, I don't think cameras are appropriate without yeah. people's consent. But if you're in a public display and you're marching and you're, you know, sharing your experience with the world. You're making a point. Yeah. I mean, you want, so, yeah, you want that to so the message public. needs to go to those people who are dressed. And right. a lot of people are genuinely curious. Mm -hmm. So we, we haven't had that many negative experiences. It's no, generally, I see people smiling. Yeah, people would smile, people applaud, people yeah. laugh. Some people take off their clothes. Nice. Which is great. Yeah, because they're like, you're naked, why can't I be naked? Yeah. Let me just get naked. <laughs> Some people participate, yeah. Amazing. Some, and, and I've noticed that there's something that I call the, the naked gen or the el gen nudista. Uh -huh. And the moment that the you're... The naked gene. The naked gene. <laughs> the moment that you're exposed to the possibility of being nude, like, you feel like you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. At least that was my experience, and that has been a lot of people that I've met. Like, the moment that they learn this is a thing, they want to take part. And other people take a little more time yeah. because there's a lot of baggage and securities, things that they have to work through. But there's also people who, the moment that they discover it, they immediately know that they, that they shouldn't, like they can't do it. Yeah. Um, there, I feel like we're passing that stage of um, our grandparents, for example, and parents definitely lived in a world where everything was more censored. So we have a little, little bit easier, but I feel like we're going through that stage of breaking point. Right, where little by little it is being a little bit more accepted um, when it comes to nudism or even uh, to another subject, but like Tantra and sexual energy, there's more information on it. There's more people becoming more aware. The new generations definitely, I feel like, are out there just saying like, we don't care anymore. You're like, you know, if I want to do this, I'm going to go out and do this and bravo to that. I think that's a little bit what, it, what it's missing. Um, let's go with some questions. I am comfortable walking around naked while I'm at my house. I just cover up all the mirrors. Oh, come on, <laughs> because it's not, because if not, the clothes go on, you fool. You're not in your 20s anymore. Gravity is really pulling on some of your parts there, buddy. <laughs> um, okay, what would you say to people that are self-confident about their bodies into coming out and being around other naked people if their bodies aren't as young as they used to? I think well, it's a funny comment because I've noticed that in the nudist community, most people are of an older generation. And I'm of the idea that the older you get, the less you're concerned about fitting in and, and yeah. the less you're concerned about meeting other people's standards. I think confidence is the muscle that you have to exercise. So the more you're, you, the more you're nude or by yourself or in front of the mirrors or with people who you trust, Mm -hmm. you feel comfortable with or in nature or whatever like it's something that you slowly build up yeah like right now I feel confident enough to walk 
down the street naked if I wanted to. Yeah. If, if there was a purpose behind it, I would do it. And it's something that doesn't concern me. But the first time I took off my clothes, I was very nervous. Right. And I was concerned about a thousand different things. So the, the more you practice it, the more you exercise it, the more confident that you'll feel. And also, the better you'll feel with yourself. Yeah, you get accustomed to it, right? It becomes normal. Like, the more we see things, uh, I like to think that if everybody was naked, then people wouldn't sexualize bodies so much because you're just naked. If you see a boob now or you see it tomorrow, it's still going to be just a boob, you know? Yeah. How did uh, nudism affect your self esteem when you started? Well, I think it has improved it greatly. Like, when I was a very introverted child, okay. I, I was very nervous about, you know, speaking in front of an audience or things like that. I've never been like, I, I was talking about this earlier while we were doing an interview. Mm -hmm. I never was a fan of being in, in, in front of the camera, like being on camera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but doing, doing this, like, for me, nudism has been such a magical experience that I've been willing to put myself through different situations like this in which I develop that self-esteem. So nudism gave me an excuse to do it, right. but it yeah. also gave me the opportunity because the more that I practice it, the more I felt comfortable with myself, the more I could develop this, this self-esteem that I can later share with other people. And I, I think that's always been like the way that I view this. Like if I can do this, you can do this. Yeah. Maybe now that I've been doing this for a while, people would be like, oh yeah, well you are in front of cameras and you do interviews and you do events and you do, so they, they see you as something distant. Mm -hmm. Like they can't reach it. They can't reach yeah. it. But when I started, I was as nervous, <laughs> as you know, introverted, as scared as anyone else. Yeah, I, I can actually uh, agree with that as well because I went through the same thing. People would tell me like, you're so free in camera, you're so relaxed and it's a journey. It's not something that happens like from one day to the next. So whatever you're going through, um, if you're looking for self-esteem, I highly recommend nudism because it, it's a boost. <laughs> for sure. Eventually, um, and the people that are in the community as well, they're just so supportive they are. that they're not going to say, oh, hey, you're fat. <laughs> you know, like, I think that only comes from people that are ignorant and um, are superficial, you know. And are That's another thing that I feel like people don't talk enough about, how supportive the community is. Like, you, you arrive very scared, you don't know, because a lot of people have a really hard time inviting a friend family member or their couple to They don't an want event anybody to know they're there. <laughs> they, they either don't want anyone to know or they can't find anyone that's willing to go with uh, them. Yeah. So they usually go by themselves. And it's always the same thing. Like people arrive nervous and you ask them who you are, where you come from, how was your first experience, like what brought you here. Mm -hmm. So that immediately is like very welcoming. Right. So, so you arrive by yourself and you leave with a lot of new friends. And people are very supportive, they're very nice, they're very inclusive. Nice. At least that has been my experience. I'm yeah. pretty, yeah, I don't know, maybe some people might have a different <laughs> experience, but in general, I feel like the community is really, really supportive. So how many people do you expect in these kind of events? I've seen, I mean, hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, I wouldn't it, say thousands. No, I mean, it looks like, okay, hundreds? So, so You look like a lot of people, that's all I'm saying. So uh, the biggest event that we had was in Mexico City last year, and it was around 400 people. Okay. And then in Guadalajara, uh, the a year prior to that was about 150, 200 okay. people, somewhat. So we expect similar numbers. Okay. Yeah. Do people come from other parts of the, of, of the, I mean, other countries? They do. They do, yeah. Um, they're not the majority, but we yeah. do have people from the States or from other Latin American countries or from Europe or, or things like that. But they tend to be hardcore nudists who are advocates, who, right, who like participate, they're like, yeah, they're, pushing they're it. willing to travel across the world Nudism to walk to naked. Die. Yeah. <laughs> nice, I like that. Um, that's why Scandinavians have saunas. They have, they have saunas everywhere, right? Jenny's just started a movement that norm normalizes nudity at the streets of Tulum. That would be interesting. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to participate in that. <laughs> well, we'll leave it up to uh, Hector here. Um, there's a website that I prefer to call Make It News. 
Oh, Naked News? <laughs> I think that's, you don't want to say the news? Uh, instead of the actual show's name. Yeah, so they do, also, they do Naked News. And it's not the only ones. Like, they've gotten uh, other people to copy them in, like, Venezuela and other parts of Latin America. I think that's really nice. It's really nice to, you can get your news from a beautiful naked chick. Why not? I mean, at the same time, they have the same professionalism than a regular journalist. So that, that's what I don't like. See, when it, when it comes to being on camera, like, what's the difference if you're naked or clothed, if the work you're doing is exactly the same, like if you're just really doing journalism or talking about life or anything. Um, as a nudism promoter, how do you feel the nudist movement has spread in Mexico? I think it's grown a lot I think so. recently, yeah. It's your fault, So, <laughs> in a I'm, good way. <laughs> I'm partially responsible for it, but I can't take all the credit. And, and for example, in, 20, in 20, 2007, Spencer Tunick came to Mexico City and he had a really big picture. That's the guy that does the picture. That does the pictures, <laughs> like yeah. The yeah. And that started a, lo a really big movement mm -hmm. in online forums. Back then it was um, NudeMex in Yahoo forums where people would just, okay. like before Facebook and all that stuff. And then from there AOL? on. Yeah, it, the well, it was <laughs> Yahoo questions and Yahoo groups and okay. Yahoo. Yeah. So people would, would get together there and they would talk about it and then they started going to Cipolite, had gatherings, and then in 2011, um, the Mexican Nudist Federation was founded. And then in 2016, you were part of that, right? I, was, I was a president of it, but in 2018, I wasn't there in the foundation. Okay. So it was founded in, in 2011, in, in 2011. Yeah, 2011. Okay, it's okay, um, a long journey. So from there, in 2016, we had the, the Nudist Festival, Cipolite. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it exploded. So my channel actually, I had, I had a really big YouTube channel that was taken down, I but know. my you channel- had millions of people. How I had, many people did you get to? I had 1.3 million followers and over 200 million views. And it lasted for like three years. It lasted a long time, yeah, the channel. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I remember when but, I first found you, I was like, how is this guy getting away with this? Like, I can't be naked on YouTube, but here he is, and, you know, with his dick out. <laughs> That's not okay. And I can't even, send a boob out on YouTube. <laughs> so bravo to you, you did yeah. a great job. <laughs> I, I mastered the algorithm. I, dis <laughs> I discovered how it worked, yeah. But that was, that was in like 2016, 2017, when, when the channel took off. Well, no, 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 not really, it was around 2018. There still is nudist channels on YouTube, I think. Um, I don't they're know. slowly disappearing, sadly. Yeah. yeah, I thought they would get a little bit more open, um, I mean, I don't know, I guess everything changes. Uh, but then again, you, you can see videos of uh, music videos that are very sexualized yeah. and it's totally okay. So I think it's just the bullshit of the industry. So if it's profitable, like if it's a main celebrity who... <laughs> Wait, my nephew Danny one year did take his daughter to a new bicy bicycle race. Yeah, nice. like the World Naked Bike Ride. So, oh, the so. World Naked Bike Ride? Yeah. So um, is there uh, Guinness records for this? There has to be, right? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah, there, I don't ha know. I think there has to be. Like the amount of naked people that are riding a bicycle at once. I think there's a Guinness record of the amount of nude people skinny dipping. Yeah, that's, yeah. But I'm not sure if like racing on, on a bicycle or something. Well, you, should, you should consider something like that for your event. The amount of naked people playing like naked volleyball or something. I, I think Guinness would be great um, advertising. But mm -hmm. did you know that that's their business? They, they actually sell world records. Yeah, and they pay. They pay but like... You have to pay in order to get it certified. Oh, you have to pay. I yeah, didn't yeah, know that's, that. That's the business. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jenny, does your nude show still exist? Yeah, we would actually have done this as a naked report, but then it wouldn't be live, so we wouldn't get your questions. So yes, it is on YouTube, that interview. Uh, what I, I don't know which interview, but okay, let's see what else we're gonna try to get to most of you We only got 15 minutes left um, Everybody has a better body than, body than me. Oh, no, never think that. Come That's on. not true Everybody's different. You just you got to love yourself how you are for those of us who don't live in the tropics going nude can lead to Is cycles forming on delicate parts? I see yeah. I cycles. What is an eye cycle? Uh well, Do I want to know? <laughs> it's, it's when when oh right yeah. right um, see como se dice en español is like the, like the little eye cycles. Like, yeah. yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, I'm sorry if you've already commented on this, but besides going naked on these events, are you celebrating... Um, damn, I can only get half of your comment. Hold on. Are you celebrating 
What are we celebrating? <laughs> Do -do -do. For some reason, this chat, anyway. Something festival. What is the theme for your gathering and how do you come up with them? I guess for the event that you're doing, do you have any theme and how do you come up with the theme? So, well, the theme is a day in the nude and the idea is to express differently what would a parallel universe look like where people can be <laughs> nude and it's not a big deal. So oh, in other right. years, we, we did marches and we took pictures in, in monuments mm -hmm. like the Angel of Independence which is like, it's like the yeah. Statue of Liberty, <gasps> the equivalent. And also in Guadalajara, there's, um, there's a statue that would be equivalent to that. It's called La Minerva. So the, they uh -huh. were really great pictures. But this year, we wanted to do it something different. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like marching, people don't really have the opportunity to listen to your message. They just mm -hmm. see a lot of random people naked walking, walking. by. And, but there's, there's no dialogue. And this year, I'd like it to be in a physical location where people could walk around, ask. We, I, I'd like to have like testimonies and people sharing their experience and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. I actually really like the theme for this year because when you see people marching, you see that it's like imposing, right? Like you're imposing nudity, and and it's kind of like you, it's a, the message comes across. But when you see people just acting about their regular life which is playing volleyball or body painting or the stuff that you were talking about, it's like, yeah, what's the difference if you're wearing clothes or not clothes? Yeah. You're still playing volleyball. It might be a little bit distracted for some people. I get it. <laughs> but it's only never... at the beginning. The, the thing about nudity is that it loses its charm very quickly. Yeah. So Shock factor. Yeah. Like, you, you see it and you're shocked, but as, as time goes by, if they're just, you know, minding their own business and doing their own thing, it's not really that amusing, so it becomes yeah. boring very quickly. And yeah. that's what I want people to see, that, that totally it doesn't have to be a big deal. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be sexual. You don't have to sexualize everything, you guys. Uh, speaking of that, how do you, the number one question I think that most men have, at least, when it comes, to, and we're gonna, we're, talk, we're gonna talk also a little bit about women and the communication you know, we were talking about earlier. Um, for men, number one question is, I'm afraid to go to a nude beach and have an erection. So how, how would you, what do you recommend to those men? I think first of all, I would, I would tell men that it's not that common. So men imagine like they, they're in a nude setting and they're immediately going to get an erection. That's not generally the case. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare that it occurs. But when it occurs, I think something that is really important to take in mind is the effects that your behavior has on other people. Right. So if you want to build a safe and comfortable environment where more people want to participate, you have to be conscious that your actions have an effect on yeah. others. So I would just say to be empathetic and considerate of others and just be aware that your be behavior can impact whether someone will participate or not in the future. Right. And with that in mind, I would just recommend people to just sit down, relax, or whatever. Don't so if try. It happens, just cover it up. I wouldn't say necessarily cover it up because I feel like there's a shameful aspect behind right. covering it yeah. up. I would just say, just, you know, take a seat, relax, and it will pass. If, if it's not something that, that you're entertaining, like right. stimulating, in like mind. in mm -hmm. your mind, like looking, oh, wow, I can't believe, like imagining all the things that you want to do. Yeah. To <laughs> if, if you, obviously, if you do that, then you will maintain the erection. Yeah. But if you just mind your own business, you relax, you're, if you're interacting with friends or whatever, just concentrate on that. It will, it will pass. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what about uh, women? Um, how do we make women feel secure in these kind of environments? Maybe women uh, that feel like maybe they're going to be harassed or you know, men coming towards them just because they're naked doesn't mean it's an invitation. What would you say to them? Well, it's hard for me to speak on women's behalf. <laughs> because... I, I can give a point <laughs> afterwards. <somewhere>. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm not a woman. But... I feel like as a community, we have the responsibility to, to build safe and comfortable environments. As a woman, I would recommend them to be aware of like where they're going. If they're going to go to a community, if they like interacting with the leaders of the community would give them a good idea. If there are community standards, if there are behaviors that are expected, you know, asking questions is really important for them to understand that they're getting into somewhere safe. If they have the opportunity, it might be a little more difficult, but if they have the opportunity to go with a friend, a family member, someone that will make them feel more comfortable in, mm -hmm. in the scenario. And also, I feel that something that women should 
do is be more assertive. Like women should communicate. If, yeah. if something is making them feel uncomfortable, I think they should communicate it. Yeah. I, I was talking to Jenny about this earlier, and I have the theory that most men aren't assholes. <laughs> and, and I believe that most That's men... That's his opinion. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I believe that no, most yeah. men aren't out there trying to make women feel uncomfortable. No. But I also feel that as men, we haven't been educated to interact with women. And, and there's very few women who are willing to take the time to communicate yep. something. And since we don't have access to this information, we behave stupidly. And I'd say stupidly because I don't feel like the intent is to make them feel uncomfortable. I just feel right. like we don't know how to handle the situation. So as a woman... Women, as a woman. As a woman, woman <laughs> as a woman. Women think that men are in their heads. I, you know, like women, think, women think he has to know what I'm thinking. No, no. <laughs> well, men I'm telling are, you like a woman. <laughs> men are, are terrible at reading minds. Right, that's it's what like, I'm saying. <laughs> we're not good at reading minds. No. So we need, we need verbal communication. If something makes you feel uncomfortable, communicate it. And that's important. And, and I feel that most men will be empathetic to it and will react accordingly. Yeah. And, and if they're doing something, maybe they're being too friendly. I think sometimes that's probably the problem, that men are probably too friendly. And mm -hmm. that may... Misunderstood. That might, might make someone feel uncomfortable. And if, if you're hanging out in an event and you don't want to interact with someone, just say, you know, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to hang out here by myself or relax a little bit or, you know, whatever. Why are just, we so scared to share what we feel with people, even with strangers? Like, especially if it's a stranger, why would you care what that person thinks? I don't know. I think we've been socially conditioned to please others as a society. Mm. Because That's such a great point. <laughs> be, because our survival depended on other people liking us. If they didn't like mm -hmm. us, they would exclude us. And if we were out in nature, like in the jungle, that would probably mean death. <laughs> Except here, we're, we're very much alive. <laughs> here, you only care to please the monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be careful with the monkeys. <laughs> you gotta be careful with the monkeys. It's great because, you know, when you see animals, you really can tell, like, how free we could be. And we're not. We can learn so much from animals, from the way that they tan, which they're not tanning, but they're absorbing light, um, to the way that they treat their bodies. What do you think about the over-sexualization of nudity in the media, and how does it hinder the promotion of the normalization of nudity? Well, I believe that I, I was talking about this. The over-sexualization of nudity is a way of objectifying or commercializing the body. Yeah. We, if, if we maintain nudity as something that people shouldn't have access to and you only have access to in, in an erotized yeah. atmosphere, I feel that that incentivizes and makes commercializing it easier. Yeah. I think that's what keeps the pornographic so smart. <laughs> industry alive. You told me I shouldn't be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> he, he should definitely be a politician. Nudity should be seen as something natural and normal as long as it doesn't offend other people's existence. Ooh, I'm... Eh, I kind of disagree with yeah, that. I, so do I. I kind of disagree with that because why should... You, I mean, people are always going to be offended. People are going to be offended no matter if you're dressed or clothed or naked or... For whatever reason. For whatever reason. Um, why do you think that people get offended so easily? Well, I think a lot of people are entitled. Something's given them entitlement? Well, well I guess they, they have. Well, they're entitled because... I, honestly, I, I honestly believe that something that is important is not to think so much of yourself and your opinion. Okay. So if you don't think that much about yourself, you become more humble. And if you're more humble, you're more receptive to other people's interpretation of reality. Okay. Yeah. So like so respect in people's minds. I think I think being humble about your opinion gives you respect to others and and then if you're not entitled, then you won't get offended because being offended is you feel like others should meet your expectations, and when they're mm -hmm. not, you get upset about it. Yeah, like so, if you don't think like me, then yeah. you're stupid. <laughs> so I, I think you're an entitled. Hmm. Um, the famous actress Marilyn Monroe was pictured in the buff herself. <laughs> yeah, she was. We are humans, we wear clothes, we aren't the same as animals. No, we're not the same as animals. I'm saying we should learn from animals in some cases. I have a monkey that visits, that visits us here, right here, like probably every three days. And he, obviously we're not monkeys, but <laughs> and it's, it's so cute to just see them like hang there and male women, you know, and they're basically like their legs are open, they're scratching themselves. It's like, could you imagine like if we were that free where people, if they saw a private part, they wouldn't say, 
ooh, I'm about to get raped. No, like, it's just the body part. Like, we were born with it. This is a part of us. And it needs to be taken like that unless you're doing something to invade somebody else's space, right? So I believe that in certain circumstances, we're probably worse than animals because animals don't destroy their environment. They don't True. destroy their homes. They don't, you know. Yeah. So we, we they can... They don't wear clothes that pollutes the world. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I think we should learn from animals in certain circumstances. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, but if you don't have anything on, Jenny, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so happy you're okay with that. <laughs> so um, I think that we're not worrying so much about what other people think is definitely also a key thing. Like if, it, if you're comfortable and you want to try out nudism, great, but also don't get like influenced by it. I mean, we're talking about nudism because Hector here promotes nudism. It's great. But you have to see what works for you. You know, maybe you, you're not comfortable in your own skin because you haven't reached that level of confidence yet. Uh, we can tell you, you know, I'm naked all day, every day, 24 seven, and I can tell you it helps your self-esteem, but you don't have to take my word for it. You know, until you try something, you're not gonna know really, it's that simple. So you can be totally against it and just say, I respect your way of life and I'm gonna just continue wearing clothing. And that's totally fine because at the end of the day, you gotta do whatever makes you happy. It's that simple. I agree. I, I don't think that nudism seeks to abolish clothing or yeah. for everyone to be naked. There, it's certainly not for everyone. But what's important is people should know that we have the option and that there's nothing wrong with our bodies. Right. If, if we choose not to be naked because of whatever reason you have, that's perfectly valid. But if people choose to be nude for whatever reason they want to, yeah. that should, should be equivalent. It yeah. should be as valid. And if it's not, then I think there's a problem in our society. I think there is a problem, though, in our well, society. Well, there's a lot of problems in our society. <laughs> there's a lot of problems. And you know what? Nudity isn't one of them. Like, nudity shouldn't be a problem. I mean, when we're thinking about wars and we're, we're, the things that we're seeing in the news, I mean, come on. Some news, even in Mexico, I've seen some really graphic news in Mexico yeah. where they show people, like, decapitated or shot or and there's blood. And it's like, and that's but, acceptable. Right, and then it throws a boob out. Ooh, no, the whole world comes down to an end because, God forbid, we're going to see a breast. So we can see <laughs> other people hurting each other, but we can't see a person walking around nude. Yeah, and also, if you're not invading somebody's space, I think that's when it's not okay. Like, if you want to be naked, um, but if you're, like, pushing your nudity onto someone that's not naked, that doesn't want to see somebody naked, then that's the invasion of privacy, I guess you could say. But if you're not doing that, then... I think, well, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting statement because I believe that in a utopic world, it shouldn't matter mm -hmm. if the other person is dressed or nude. I try to be considerate when I, when I go nude. I don't go nude at like the public beach where everyone is at, families and things like right. that. Because I don't want, I don't want to generate antagonism Conflict, or, yeah. or radicalism or that kind of stuff. Because I believe that at the end, that is going to take me further away from my goal, which is to normalize nudity. Mm -hmm. but, I, but when I go like, to a random beach or whatever where people aren't around, I, I tend to be nude. But I do feel that in, in, in a utopic universe, there shouldn't be a distinction. Mm -hmm. Like people should, should, Nudity should be allowed in any, almost any public gathering. Maybe sometimes we need clothing. Like if you're at a construction site, you need a helmet, you need, you know. <laughs> I've been in this construction site and I've, I'm always naked, like throughout the whole construction. But yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I could be very There's situations where clothing is <laughs> necessary. important. Yeah, it protects. Alaska. It, yeah, that would be, that'd be a place where I wouldn't want to be naked. That would be necessary. Um, all right, guys, we're starting to wrap it up. Anything else you want to share about the event, about if they want to join you in your community, if you want to share your social media? So if you guys are interested in following more of what's going on when it comes to a day in the nude, you can find me at Dia al Desnudo on most platforms. I'd recommend Twitter, or you can find me at underscore Hector underscore MTC. There um, it is. It's on the screen right now. You guys can see. Yeah. It. <laughs> so that that's the platform that for now allows us to be nude. So it's not as censored as others. And there you will find information of a day in the nude and events, gatherings, other things that I have going on. Um, so yeah. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. When are you coming to Tulum to do an event? 
That's a good question. Did you hear about the, the person that was doing naked yoga in the morning at a festival? No. That's because he was so high on drugs that they said, this is what drugs do to you in Tulum. <laughs> and this, this guy was literally like butt naked in the streets of Tulum at like six in the morning, just doing like cartwheels or some, some kind of exercise and yoga. Yeah, no, you still get arrested, guys. Nudity is still not legal, unfortunately. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> um, how does the, the government and the police, um, you know, deal with you guys when you're doing these events? Are so, they supportive? So these events are public displays, which are protected under the Constitution. Nice. So it's like freedom of speech kind yeah. of thing. So all we have to do is just notify a government that this is going to take place, mm -hmm. and they have the legal responsibility to protect people that participate. So we generally have police officers, traffic officers. Nice. We have um, uh, civil protection. I'm not yeah. sure how you call that. Yeah, civil protection. Civil protection. Just the police, like, basically. It's more like... Like they protect like, the civil rights. But it's more like right. firefighters or uh. medic, like doctors mm -hmm. or things like that that are in, in just there in case Do something Do you get happens. the church people? Uh, We've had a lot of, like, there's, it's interesting because not everyone in church feels the same way about nudity. Okay. But that's another controversial topic. That some are okay with it? Some of are okay with it, and even priests, some priests are okay with it. We've nice. had priests participate in our community. Oh, I love that. Amazing. That's a priest I would follow, see? <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Key West, uh, we, we've been doing, fan have you ever been to Fantasy Fest? I haven't, no. No, you, no. you have to go. You'll love it. Uh, so in Key West... Uh, what do you think about social media restrictions regarding nudity? Okay, one second. In Key West, there's uh, every Halloween, right, there's a festival about um, basically like a themed, it's a bunch of adults dressed up and following a theme. It's a lot of fun, very respectful. Um, there's people from all kind of communities. Uh, and there's always the groups of people from the Jesus, you know, in church who says, you're all going to hell. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I don't know what's worse, like the people actually doing the event that are very peaceful or those basically like sending you really bad vibes. Because you could say like, I'm not, you know, I'm not okay with you. But when somebody's aggressive with that, that kind of comment, like that doesn't come with, from positivity. That you, doesn't come from what, like... What would I say to those people? I'd say to read the Bible because... The Bible, Jesus specifies that you can't focus on your neighbor's sins before focusing on yourself. So nice. it's like, don't throw the rock unless yeah. you're free of sin. And if you're not free of sin, you know, why? Why would you, why you would you go and, and, and also like if your goal is to share a message, what message is coming across when you're being, being aggressive, aggressive and yeah. violent and... I always think that too. So if you guys are ever... Um, is it aggressed, ag aggravated? What would be the right word if you're being attacked? I guess if you guys are ever being attacked by somebody or bullied by someone, um, always remember that. You know, if it's coming from a hateful message, then that's not a message you want to take in. Good evening from India. Hi, Ish. Welcome. Uh, okay, to wrap it up, the last comment was, what do we think about social media censorship. and censorship? Oh, we hate it. <laughs> I, I think that's, well, at least in the nudist community, that's the number one threat. That's the yeah. main concern that doesn't allow us to, to change. It's funny because they use censorship because they want to protect something. Uh, so they, they want, I don't know, they want to protect morals or ideals or whatever. But they end up becoming the ones that perpetrate the toxic behavior that yeah. they want to protect us because from. Because it's not normalized. Yeah, because if you, if you censor something, if you prohibit something, it's not going to go away. No. But it's going to be practiced in a radical and unsafe environment. Yeah. And if you allow things, you allow people to develop more safe, inclusive, and better ways to exercise that. So by censoring something because you want to protect, I don't know, people from being sexually assaulted, you're actually the cause of that sexual yeah. assault. Yeah. Because people yeah. will still seek nudity, but they'll do it in a hypersexualized, unhealthy way that leads to objectification and you know harassment. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for being with us. Hector, Thank you should you be a politician. Invitation. You're Thank amazing. You <laughs> Someday. He, he's, he's just like so intricate and you're so intelligent and the way that you bring your message across, I think it's amazing. Thank if you, Instagram Jenny. allowed nudity, 90% of it, it would be porn. That's true too. Could be, yeah. yeah. But only because we don't have access to porn. So I think that would be just the beginning and eventually people will get tired of it. Yeah.
All right, guys, big kisses. See you in the next Journey Live. Have an amazing evening. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Tienes que ir a sacarlo ya. Yeah.